Okay, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video in which we're going to be constructing a space station in low carbon orbit in my kind of new save file that so far doesn't have a space station in low carbon orbit. So hey, this is a good enough excuse as any. And I think is this video is kind of enhanced a bit by having the unique selling point of being constructed entirely with space shuttles. And uh, this is the space shuttle here, the Tatsu, which has made an appearance on this channel before. Here it is again. Uh, not the best separation just then. You can, it does actually work though. The boosters can separate without hitting the wings. I just detached them when I wasn't pointing prograde, so they kind of got pushed into the wings. But luckily, a quick visual inspection of the ship revealed that it was only damaged to the boosters that those explosions represented and not actually damaged to the, not any damage to the orbiter. So, um, since there's going to be quite a few launches, most of the uh, ascents and descents and just general <laughs> orbital maneuvers are going to be played at fairly pa fast speed. I kind of wanted this video to kind of just... I didn't want it to be more than 20 minutes long for what it was because it's basically just LKO. So I thought if it's any longer than 20 minutes, it might end up being a little bit repetitive. So this is it. This was the concept. So we're currently launching the core module, which I think is the biggest module. There's going to be um, a few different modules. We've got the core module here. We also have a kind of a science lab wing, a solar array, and then a docking arm. And in the docking arm launch, we're also going to be sending up the crew as well. Now, I wanted to make this video for a few different reasons, really. First and foremost, my most viewed video on this channel is a video of me building a space station, and I'm pretty sure a lot of that success comes from the fact the thumbnail had a space shuttle in it. I think that just, it was quite a visually evocative <laughs> thumbnail for one of a, probably one of a better, better term there. So I figured that that was something that people maybe wanted to see again, I don't know, but with a commentary track to kind of talk a little bit more about the, the process and things. Uh, the second reason, as I already mentioned, we don't have a space station in low carbon orbit currently. We do have one in low joule orbit, or high joule orbit I guess, which is kind of a, a weird sort of paradox almost, that uh, we did one for joule before we did one for carbon, whatever. This is not a single launch space station, which I think is a bit more difficult than a single launch space station. I mean, you could argue that the logistics, it's pointed out on my Discord server, that the logistics of a single launch station might be more impressive than a multiple launch space station, but me personally, especially when we're using space shuttles, which are an incredibly difficult craft to fly, I think a multiple launch for an LKO station was probably the way to go. So yes, Number one reason was the fact that I think people wanted to maybe see more space shuttle action. Number two was that I wanted to build a space station in LKO. And number three was that I was kind of thinking of making this kind of an overarching series as part of the Lockheed Martian program. That's something I've been kind of wanting to recreate for a little while, actually. The Lockheed Martian program, well, it's kind of a nickname given to Lockheed Martin's proposition for a NASA mission. There would be a few different stages to it, and admittedly, uh, having a low Earth orbit space station doesn't fully come into the actual plan itself. They're going to be using a lot of data they've learned from the International Space Station and uh, previous space station missions that would be, you know, helpful for the Lockheed Martian mission. So we better as well, may as well start from the ground up and build ourselves a space station in low carbon orbit. By the way, didn't do a very good job <laughs> getting this, uh, this orbiter in without spinning it out. Unfortunately, this space shuttle does stall very easily just by the nature of its kind of shape. It's very, very unstable in flight. It is possible to land it without it spinning out of control. It does have a lot of fuel in it. I probably should have launched it with slightly less fuel because of the fact the payload wasn't as heavy as this uh, space shuttle is potentially able to carry. So um, because it was the, the weight distribution wasn't really that optimal, it was far easier to put it into a flat spin. Anyway, where was I? <laughs> so yes, our Kerbals are going to learn valuable information in the space station that orbits Kerbin, which to, admittedly they probably should have done before they sent off a massive <laughs> space station around the uh, the orbit of a distant gas giant, but whatever, these guys, you know, they don't always, uh, they like, they're ambitious, they're ambitious, but not always uh, the best planners. Again, not a very good separation, don't worry, at some point in this video we will successfully deploy the boosters without them smashing into the orbiter's wings. Anyway, like I say, so we're going to be doing a lot of space station science, that sort of thing, learning about how to survive in the cold, harsh atmospheres of space. The second stage would be constructing the uh, the deep space gateway around the MUN, which uh, I would have a problem with this because I have already done that, but that was in my old save file, which I don't have anymore, so I'm a little bit 
I'll, I'll, I will do a, a Mun Space Station video, but it won't probably be a very accurate, well, not that this video has a very accurate recreation of the ISS either, but um, in talking about kind of keeping to the law of Lockheed Martian, I probably won't make a very faithful recreation of the Deep Space Gateway just because I've already done that. And, you know, we want to keep the channel a little bit varied, so we can kind of go, you know, all out on making a nice, cool um, orbital MUN station for that part of the Lockheed Martian phases. Anyway, after we've established the Deep Space Gateway, we can use that as a kind of uh, midway destination for uh, crews to get from Earth to Mars. So we have the Deep Space Gateway, then it will be the establishment of the Mars Base Camp, which is a space station around the Red Planet. And interestingly, come to think of it, I've never actually designed a space station around Duna. I know a lot of people I think a lot of people know me as the SSTO guy, but also a lot of people know me as the person that builds space stations a lot. And I kind of think it's weird that I've never built one around Juno, when considering that's one of the more popular interplanetary destinations in the Kerbin systems. Hey, it's a good excuse to build a a, uh, a Mars station or a Juno station, I guess. I don't really, I've never really been that interested in doing real solar system, to be honest. So it would be the construction of a space station around Juno. And then kind of the next phase after that would be to construct and re recreate the, uh, the Lockheed Martin ascenders and descenders, like, you know, the, the, the landers, basically. And these are single-stage to orbit uh, vehicles in that they, can, not, not from Earth, obviously, they can get from Mars orbit to Mars surface and then back to the uh, Mars base camp in orbit in one without deploying any stages. And they look really, really cool, actually. They look straight out of a science fiction novel. So uh, I don't think they're going to be the, I don't, it's not going to be the easiest shape to recreate with stock Kerbal Space Program parts. So I may take a few artistic liberties here and there but generally i think we call to kind of design a single stage uh juno lander that has all the kind of scientific features and things that lockheed martin plan to incorporate into their landers after that we could then kind of follow on and start creating mars ground stations and things which don't technically fall under the Mar lockheed martian program proposition as of yet but i'm sure that will be kind of the natural progression especially with Elon Musk's big desire to establish a big city on Mars. So there we go. So let's see how this descent is going so far. It's going pretty well. I haven't spun out just yet. So hey, there's your <laughs> there's your proof this shuttle does uh, work pretty well when you're actually paying attention to what you're doing. So you may have noticed, maybe I should talk about the design of the craft. You may have noticed the uh, there's the two orbital engines on the side. When I detach the external fuel tank, I'm actually using an action group that does a few different things. It, Obviously it decouples the main fuel tank and it also disables the vector engines as well so they stop gimbling once we're in space and have deployed the, uh, the external fuel tank and then we can just manually activate the orbital engines with another action group which in this for this ship are the terrier engines, they're very very efficient compared to the vectors and then obviously we have that jet engine as well and that serves a couple of purposes. I have demonstrated in a video before that you don't actually need the jet engine to land at the Kerbal Space Center but I know it's very easy to kind of get your uh, descent a little bit off axis and I know a couple of a few times in this video I ended up needing the jet engine but the second reason to have it is the fact that this thing doesn't have any parachutes to slow itself down on landing I know I know technically you don't need parachutes to slow down on the runway because it's so long and the brakes are quite good but in case you kind of land a little bit too far down you can actually use the reverse thrust mode of the jet engine to slow yourself down very very quickly in lieu of using a parachute obviously it's not as effective as a parachute but i think it looks for it makes for a nice sort of cleaner more kind of futuristic answer to uh, to stopping anyway getting on to the next phase now this is probably the most complex phase to be honest in that we're gonna have to do a little bit of reassembling of the module well it's kind of a, a modular module, if that makes sense. There's three different components packed away into that cargo bay inside the space shuttle. So uh, we're going to be doing our approach to the uh, the space station now. I apologize, by the way, that this hasn't really been... A, I haven't been very sort of tutorially in this episode. I feel like there's way too many launches that if I was going into detail exactly about how I'm getting into orbit or how I'm getting my rendezvous and how I'm creating the maneuvers and things... It would be very, very long just because of the sheer number of times I'm redoing the same mission over and over again. I feel like I have done uh, videos in the past where I talk a lot more about kind of the ins and outs of docking more thoroughly. And Scott Manley's done an excellent uh, video about orbital rendezvous that I don't think I could really improve upon, to be honest, or add anything meaningful to. So I'm sure if you just kind of search up the relevant keywords there, it'll come up in your search results. So there we go. The, uh, the payload doors are open. You can kind of see the three modules there. So we have two big solar arms and then we kind of have this that gold thing there as well that just serves as uh, kind of like a central point that they both attach to 
I should probably mention this is fully stock this game, but we are using the mods. Sorry, <laughs> so this is a fully stock game, but we are using the parts from the uh, the Making History DLC expansion. So that's why you may be unfamiliar with some of the pieces. But I think generally this is almost entirely stock. There's not many things that aren't in the stock game. In fact, are those new panels? Are they? They might just be part of KSB 1.4. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure that those are part of the Making History DLC. I'd have to check. I'm not 100% certain if this is fully stock or not, but uh, maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it is, and I've just not really... I didn't really read the patch notes properly. <laughs> anyway, this video, you may have noticed, marks the grand return of the visual mods. So we now have a, what I'm currently using at the moment. I've got Scatterer installed. We also have Planet Shine in addition to environmental visual enhancements, which I'm kind of, which I, I didn't use the stock config files for that mod. I'm using the config files from Astronomer's Visual Pack, which I think is the most popular config file, I guess, after the ones that come bundled with environmental visual enhancements. I don't really know, but Astronomer's uh, Visual Pack is very, very good. So uh, that's what I'm currently using on this video. I know people are going to ask in the comment section anyway, but uh, for those of you that might have asked and have now reached this point in the video, there you go, that, that's the answer. And also in the description, these mods are in the description. So uh, yeah, there's the first arm. So you can see it's kind of doing this weird swaying thing, and that's just because we have the reaction wheels not only in the central gold bit and obviously in the main, the rest of the ship itself. We also have the reaction wheels at the ends of these big flimsy arms. As a result of that, they're like constantly librating and kind of trying to fight the reaction wheel differences, which then starts to make it bend more and more. So you just have to disable the toggle, disable the torque of the little reaction wheel module, the probe core, and that kind of uh, nose cone piece. And there we go. That's that. So we can send a little Kerbal out to go and do a quick inspection of the ship so far, and we can actually get him inside and activate the solar panels on those two arms. We can start getting power. Uh, well, I mean, getting power kind of in the metaphorical sense, because as you can see, we're already covered up in solar panels and RTGs. This thing is definitely never going to be short of power. This is complete overkill. It does not need this number of gigantic solar panels. But you know what? It looks pretty cool, and that's good enough in my books. At the end of the day, space stations are largely redundant in Kerbal Space Program anyway. There's very few practical uses for space stations, especially ones as elaborate uh, as this one. A space station in Kerbal Space Program really only needs kind of a science lab, some kind of battery equipment, and a probe core or a uh, command module, depending on how you feel. Oh, look at that view, by the way. What a beautiful sight. Uh, and yeah, some means to power the lab and communications equ equipment. It does not need to be this massive, expansive, networked out, spaghetti-like monstrosity that I've created, but you know what? Sometimes it's nice to build whatever I just said and have forgotten now. So uh, yeah, we can begin our ascent, and now, what do we think? Am I going to stall it? I can't actually remember. I pieced together this footage, and then, that was yesterday, and then I'm kind of recording the commentary today, Oh, no, never mind. Well, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, that was the answer. I, I did spin it out. You may have noticed as well, I haven't actually been recovering the shuttles. I only recovered the crew. So I, I don't know, I don't know why. I just thought it'd be kind of funny. <laughs> so, bit of a he hectic landing, trying to land and also miss all the obstacles I left on the runway. You can also see some kind of weird visual glitches here. I believe that Scatterer freaking out. It could well be Astronomer's Visual Pack or Environmental Vision Enhancements, but generally Scatterer tends to be the buggy one. I'm sure someone in the comments will let me know that I'm wrong, but uh, <laughs> that's what my gut instinct would be. And here we are, preparing to launch the final module, and as you can see, it's a different space shuttle, because I thought at the last minute, I thought, hey, it'd be kind of cool to show a different kind of space shuttle. Obviously everyone's familiar with the Mark III space shuttles, but the Mark II shuttles, you know, they're kind of cool as well, and you know, the Mark II parts also have their own kind of uh, cargo base. I thought, hey, let's show a practical use of a, uh, a slim space shuttle. And we're also uh, sending up the crew as well. So they're kind of sitting in a dedicated crew pod because I thought it wouldn't be that, it wouldn't be all that realistic to have them sitting inside the cargo. <laughs> uh, well, the cargo is like a docking arm, so there is crew capacity inside the cargo. I thought for the sake of a little bit of realism, we'll put them inside a dedicated crew, crew pod on the shuttle itself. And then we have uh, Jebediah, and I think that's Bill? Yeah, that's Bill. <laughs> I can't, I, I'm looking at quite a small preview window in Sony Vegas, so it's hard for me to kind of read the names very well. But there we go, look what I was saying about the visual mods. That's a, even the map screen looks stunning now. 
Now, as you can see, there's a few things that are different about this launch, uh, this launcher. First of all, it's not like the uh, the NASA space shuttle in that the main engines are only on the orbiter and obviously the SRBs that get detached. We also have an engine on the uh, the actual external fuel tank itself, which is very similar to the Buran space shuttle that the Soviet Union created. A couple of reasons for this. First of all, it makes uh, kind of the ship a lot more stable. Uh, it's just much easier to construct space shuttles in this way. And also the fact that we can actually recover this land, this booster, because as you may have seen, we also have some landing legs and air brakes attached to it, so we can land it once again. Unfortunately, you may see the electric charge on the top right is very low. Uh, well, it's not at the moment, but it will run out very fast because I pop I forgot to put additional batteries on this thing and a means to recharge those batteries, so I was having to very frequently throttle the engine up just to make sure our power source is never actually depleted to zero. So that was a bit of a, don't do that. <laughs> but other than that, it was a pretty successful landing, I think. And then we are touching down. And that's what I, how I would have liked to have ended that. Unfortunately, my ascent profile meant I couldn't actually do what you just saw, as in I had to reload the quick save because of the fact that in stock KSP, by the time the ship had landed, this thing had already passed its aquapsis and was now hurtling back towards the planet's surface. So you can use a mod, like stage recovery mods or something like that, or you could kind of design your ascent to um, allow a lot more time for you to land your booster before your craft ends up hitting its aquapsis, but the flight I went with, none of those things were possible. So unfortunately, it was a pure fantasy of, of recovering the booster. Anyway, all that aside, we can uh, cut to our, well not cut, but you know, crossfade away nicely to our final rendezvous so we can get ourselves pointed nicely towards the space station, open the cargo bay doors and reveal that cargo. So it's not a big cargo because of the fact that we don't really need a big cargo here. Uh, there is an RTG uh, clipped inside that. That's the only, I never really like sort of hiding power parts inside, but I couldn't really find an elegant way. Or I, like I already don't like having the monopropellant mono tanks and reaction wheels on the external surface of this thing, so I thought we'll just clip the RTG in so it doesn't run out of electricity during the docking process. Anyway, we can gradually nudge it forward, and look at that. And we can actually test it, well, hang on, let's not get too ahead of, there we go. So we can actually test this out ourselves now, because obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the crew is not on board the docking arm, It's still on, they're still on board the space shuttle itself, so we can coast along towards it, and we can open up the inline docking port, which I always like to uh, work into uh, space uh, SSTOs and Mark, well, any Mark II craft really, in which I'm going to be doing a docking mission, because I think it looks pretty cool as far as the parts go, even though it's it's not really that practical. Uh, but it does have like monopellant tanks on board it, in case any of you were unfamiliar. If you, do, you don't need to put monopellant tanks on Mark II ships if you're using that docking port, unless you like to be very, very liberal with the RCS. But there we go, got a nice cinematic-y pan around shot with Kerbin sitting mag majestically below us with our space station there in its final glory. So, yep, during that we can just skip ahead of me transferring the crew along the arm. We can uh, reverse back a little bit and get ready to uh, enter Kerbin for the final time, at least for the final time on this mission. Further expansions I'd like to do for this uh, station. I'm literally thinking of this as I'm saying this out loud. I forgot to add escape pods. So hopefully, hopefully our Kerbals, hopefully Ebola doesn't break out or anything on the space station because those guys there, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a happy ending, unfortunately. But so maybe that could be like a potential future expansion project. We add some escape pods or something like that, or like a rotating habitation ring. That's something I'd like to do. I've never done it on this channel is a ship with an act, like a stock space station with a functional rotating habitation ring. It is very difficult. I never liked making stock axles or propellers and things because they are very, very glitchy and temperamental. But I think I've got a good way of making kind of a rotating ring that doesn't feel too crackeny. And here we are swooping down to the runway one last time. You can see kind of the glitching out there, panels sort of freaking out. So I won't spend too much time in this particular scene. We can just show off some shots of the space station to finish off. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, where I post a lot of KSP memes, I just keep it at least once a week, <laughs> then uh, you can follow me on Twitter. There's also my Discord. We are now partnered, so we have a lot of great new features like better voice chat quality, and uh, well, that's about it, actually. <laughs> and, uh, and then also I've got my Patreon if you'd like to support my channel monetarily, so I appreciate anyone that does that. And uh, yeah, other than that, on screen, there are some links. The top left was the uh, the first time this space shuttle was shown off. The top right is the construction of the Deep Space Gateway recreation I did a, a while ago. Bottom left is just my most recent upload. And bottom right was chosen for you by YouTube's algorithm. So I hope you enjoyed this video. 
and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.